and welcome or welcome back to my channel. I had a lot of requests for a bride and groom gnome. Finally got around to making it. I got the groom first and the bride will be coming soon. Take a look at this little guy. He's super cute, super easy to make. I've included the pattern. If you want to how to make this little guy, stick around. I'll show you how. Thank y'all so much for being here. I really appreciate it. Okay, for the hat, we're going to start with some chipboard. I've given you the pattern in both SVG and PDF in the description below. Download them and cut them out. And we're just going to fold this over one quarter of an inch. And then go ahead and take your round piece and go ahead and pull all your tabs back. And I'm sorry if my voice sounds a little bit funny. I have allergies right now. And you're just going to stick that right up into the bottom and you're going to glue all your tabs to the inside. And you can either do it from the top or you can even do it from the bottom. Okay, for the top part of the hat, you're just going to fold all your tabs in. And don't worry about the piece that I have cut there. I'm, I am tested that part and it didn't work. So I'm going to show you here how we're going to trim these out here in just a second. We are just going to notch each one of these outward. And this will keep it from being so bulky inside when you're, when you're gluing these tabs in. And next, go ahead and put all those little tabs right inside the top. And then you're going to glue on one side and the opposite side just to get it in place. But you want to make sure that that hat is flush with the top. Just kind of bend those back and start gluing those in. But you want to make sure that it is flat on top. Let's go ahead and cut your felt pieces out and we're going to start by putting one of the little circles over the top part. Now don't disregard how mine looks. I have a notch out the back of it. It's not supposed to. It just mine, I cut it out that way and I'll have to fix it here in a minute. Just get that glued all the way around. Make sure it is glued in well. Then we're going to go ahead and take our other fabric part and go over the top. So start right into the very back. Line it up. And then you're going to go all the way around and meet to the back. Now you want to make sure that you are all the way down at the bottom of that brown so there's nothing showing. Because we're not going to trim, we're not going to put a piece of trim around it. Okay, next we're going to go ahead and cover the bottom part up with the other part. Just glue all the around and make sure that they meet and they touch. You want to glue those two pieces of fabric together. Because we are going to trim that out here in a little bit. We just go all the way around, get it glued in good, and then we're going to trim it. Okay, next we're going to glue the top on. So go ahead and glue it together and then make sure that the two fabrics all the way around the edges meet with this. So kind of glue close to the edge and then pull it in all the way around till you can, can't see any of the cardboard. And if you can't find chipboard, you can use a cereal box. It works exactly the same way. Okay, next I'm just going to take a little skinny piece of trim, probably about an eighth of an inch, and just go all the way around. Just kind of measure yours and see. I think this one ended up being like 15 and a half inches, but go ahead and measure all the way around your brim to get your exact measurement. And then just kind of glue all the way around till it's completely covered up. Next we're going to take a pool noodle that measures two and a quarter inches by five inches, and then just go ahead and cut that off. That's going to be for the body. And I got this pool noodle at Dollar Tree. For the shirt, I'm taking a piece of fabric that measures two and a half by five and three quarter. And that's just white felt I'm using. And I'm just going to glue it right to the front of this noodle. If you glue onto the fabric instead of the noodle, your noodle won't melt as much. Go ahead and put your hat on and make a mark right where it ends. And it ends at about two and a quarter of an inch. Okay, next I'm going to add a cummerbund. It measures two inches by five and a half inches. And we're going to add two pleats to this. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to hem up both ends on the long side. And then we're going to pleat it in the middle so we have two pleats. Okay, so you're going to fold it backwards and then backwards again to make that first pleat and then go ahead and iron that. And 
and then we're going to go ahead and turn it and we're going to glue that down. Then fold this one over till it meets in the middle and then fold it back so that you have that nice pleat and then go ahead and iron that down and then we're going to glue that as well. And if you don't want to do the pleats, you don't have to. You can just go ahead and just use a piece, a strip of the, of the fabric. And then we're just going to come right around the middle, about an inch up from the bottom, and we're going to glue that in. And this way you'll see it through the jacket. And just go ahead and cut your sides off and just make sure everything's glued down. Okay, next we're going to take a piece of fabric that measures eight and a half by four inches and we are just going to come right around the center of our body and you're going to overhang the edge of the white fabric just a little bit come to the center fold the two pieces back so you can see the cummerbund and then we're going to glue those in so you are going to have an overlap because we are going to put some buttons okay and we're just going to glue right at the bottom to start with get that glued in and then we're going to glue our flaps back Next, we're just going to glue all the way around the back. Okay, next to give the jacket a little character, we're just going to cut two little notches, one on each side. We're going to add two little buttons to the very front. We're going to add a little tail to the back of the jacket. Just go ahead and cut your pattern out and we're cutting this out of the same fabric. Now I'm just using a heathered gray black felt and I get this on Etsy but you can use any kind of felt you want to. And then we're going to go ahead and gather up the very top part of the edge of that tail and wrap that around to the back part of the jacket. So just do like quarter inch stitches all the way across the top and then we're going to gather it in and I'll show you what the measurement is on the gather. Okay, so you end up gathering it till it's three and a quarter inches long. And then go ahead and tie your string off. And then we're going to attach it in the back. We're going to come up about an inch from the bottom and we're going to glue it right down. So go ahead and put two pins in and then you can get your center point and glue it in. And then you can take your pins back out and make sure that you got it straight. You want to make sure you get this straight across the back. And then we're going to cover it up with that strap. But really concentrate on getting your line straight across there. The strap, it measures three and a half by one and a half inches. And we are just going to glue up right to the center on both sides. And you could just use a straight piece of fabric if you want to, but I wanted to give it a little bit of a body so it did stick off of the jacket a little bit. And then we're going to glue this right over the top part of that pleat. Just line it up real good and go over the top part of the pleat just to cover up the top edge. And to dress it up a little bit, I'm just going to put a black button on each side. Next, I'm just going to cut like a one inch slit up the back of the jacket on the tail part just to kind of give it some definition. Okay, next for the shoes, I'm taking the Dollar Tree Party Favor shoes and I'm going to add three little 5 16 inch nuts into each one of these. Now, if you don't have access to these shoes, I will give you a link to a um, video that I made that shows you how to make these from scratch. But make sure you do add some weight because he won't stand up right if you don't. we're just going to glue these to a piece of felt and make sure you get them glued in real well because we're not going to trim these shoes out we're just going to go ahead and glue them in and then let those dry real good and then go ahead and cut them out now you'll see that I didn't wait till they dried real good so my glue was sticking to my scissors we just get them trimmed out all the way to the edge Okay, for the main part of the shoe, we're going to take a piece of fabric that measures one and a half by five and a half. Find your center point in the back and we're going to glue this to the back of the shoe. 
and then you're going to come around with one side glue it all the way around and then lay it over and then we're going to overlap the other side with the other with the flap of the other one and then we're going to put a button right where they where they go over the edge so just get that one glued down the flap all the way down and do the same thing with the other side and go overlap that one this is a real quick and easy way to make these shoes and they do look cute once you put a button on them and then go ahead and glue all the way around the edges of them and then go ahead and tuck those into the shoes We're just going to add a button right to the edge of that um, flap and then do the same thing with the other shoe and we're going to put it, the over flap bit on the opposite side and then go ahead and add a button next for the legs i'm going to take a one and a half inch cork and i'm just going to cut it right in half and you can do two of these and i'm just going to cut them with my miter cutter Take two quarter inch by six inch dowel sticks and sharpen one end. Take a quarter inch drill bit and drill a hole through the center of all four of these. And this is, doesn't take long to do. This is pretty quick and easy. Just hold your hand around that cork and just go ahead and run that through. And you could probably just use your hot glue gun to poke a hole through the center of it on both sides. Let's go ahead and take your sticks and we are going to cut them at five inches in length. So you're going to cut the blunt end on both of these off one inch. And then I'm just using my miter shears to do this. Next for the pants, I'm taking a piece of fabric that measures four and a quarter by five inches. And I'm going to hem up a half inch on the four and a quarter inch side. We're just putting a little cuff on there for him. And then just go ahead and glue it down. And do the exact same thing with the other leg. Okay, next glue down one of the long sides and fold it over to the opposite side. And just make sure that your cuff is on the inside of this. Because we are going to turn this right side out. And then do the same thing with the other leg. Then let those dry real good. And we're going to turn them right side out. I'm just going to take a pair of pliers pull it right up into the top part, pinch it, and then drag it through. It is a little bit tight, but you can get this through. This will give you a nice finish edge on the back. Okay, next go ahead and put your cork inside of your shoes. Now you can glue this in if you want to, but they're pretty tight. I don't think they're gonna come out. And then we're going to go ahead and put our stick in there and glue it in. Now you want to make sure that you get a 90 degree angle on your stick once you put it in. Make sure it's standing up straight. Okay, next just go ahead and put the other cork right over the top. And you're going to push it down until you just have about an inch at the top. And you want to make sure that you get them both even. And then put a little bit of glue on the top and the bottom just to hold them in place. Okay, next we're just going to slide our pant leg down over the top of these with the cuff on the bottom. And then we're going to glue these to the bottom part of the shoe or to the top part of the shoe. And you don't need a lot of glue. Go ahead and glue the back down and you're just going to kind of spot glue in sections. And then do the same thing with the other shoe. Next we're going to take quarter inch slits all the way down. Just go all the way down to the top part of that cork. And then we're going to cut off um, every other tab to about um, a half an inch. And that's what we're going to glue to the cork. And the other part we're going to glue to the noodle. And it doesn't have to be a perfect match, but just go ahead and get as many opposites as you can. And then go ahead and glue those to the cork.
and then we're just going to put a little bit of glue right onto the top part of the cork and then the little tabs and we will glue that to the noodle up underneath his jacket. Go ahead and put a little bit of glue right around the top part of the um, stick and around the cork and then on your tabs and we're going to push this up on one side of the pool noodle right in the center and then go ahead and push your tabs on down and then put the other leg in exactly the same way. Just make sure that your tabs are flush with the noodle. And then what I did on this one, I went ahead and pushed it on up in here and then I did my tabs. It was a little bit easier this way. Just go back in there, pull them back and put some glue and attach them to the noodle. Let's cut out two of the arm pattern from the pattern in the description below and then just put those aside. Next for the arms, I'm going to take some wire and I'm going to take some cause clay. This is oven baked clay that's a little bit flexible and I'm just going to roll this into a log to make the arms. And we're going to roll them till they're about a half of an inch thick. We're going to cut them to length and I'm going to show you exactly how long they're going to be. They're going to measure two and a quarter inches in length and do the same thing with the second one and then we'll add the wire. And we'll add the hands here in a minute and blend it all together. We're going to take a five and a half inch piece of wire and we're going to run it right up into that. We're going to go from the bottom all the way to through the top. Just kind of take your time on that part and if it goes out the wrong place you can just pull it back and push it back in and fix it. And then just kind of shape it, roll it and shape it out there. And then do the same thing with the other one. Okay, next I'm just going to take about a half inch little ball of the clay, roll it up into a log shape, and then I'm going to flatten out half of it and I'm going to squeeze the other half the opposite way. Then go ahead and cut a little um, thumb out of there and then shape it up into the thumb. We're only going to do a thumb, we're not going to do all the fingers. and then go ahead and slide it onto your wire and then we're going to blend it in there. Just make sure your wire is straight and you're only going to go just you know halfway into that hand. And then go ahead and start blending with your finger till you get it completely blended. And then you're going to bake these at 275 degrees for 20 minutes. And don't worry about it being so perfect right there because we are going to cover that up. And then do the same thing with the other arm. Next you're going to go ahead and bend your wire at a 90 and then you're going to fold it back and, and squeeze it together. Now make sure that this is facing, that the thumbs are facing forward on this because this is the part that's going to go into the body. And then cut off any excess. Go ahead and put your hat on and we're going to come down probably about three quarters of an inch from the hat and cut a hole in there. And then go ahead and put your arm in there just to make sure that it goes in there good and then do the same thing with the other side just to make sure that they're even and then we are going to cover them. Next I'm just going to take a white ribbon to go around the wrist and this is just going to act like the shirt like it's where he's wearing a shirt underneath his jacket. So just go all the way around there, trim that off and then um, just glue that on. You just need enough just to go all the way around. And then go ahead and trim that off and then go ahead and glue the rest of it together. And you're going to do exactly the same thing on the other arm. Then go ahead and put a little glue right down into the top part where that hole is just to make sure it stays together on both of them. And then we're going to add our jacket sleeve. So go ahead and just take your um, arm, go ahead and wrap it around the jacket. Make sure that you are towards the back part and then just turn it and glue it in. And you're just going to glue the jacket to itself. You're not going to glue it to the hand or to the arm. And then do the same thing with the other one. 
And then we're going to take some needle and thread and we are going to gather that sleeve. Now this is a new pattern that I just um, started doing. I really learned that this is a really nice way to make an arm sleeve so that it does go flush against the body and it doesn't just stick out. This is a great way to make a sleeve. So you're just going to make quarter inch stitches all the way around the curved area and you're going to draw it in. If you've ever sewn a regular pattern with a sleeve, you'll see that that's exactly how that's done. And that way it's kind of hidden and it's right up against the body. So you're going to go ahead and pull it as tight as you can and then you're going to um, sew that and tie it off. And then we are going to sew the arm to the body here in a minute. That way we'll make sure it just stays in place because we're going to add some stuffing. And then do your other arm exactly the same way. Next, go ahead and pull your sleeve down where you just have about a quarter of an inch or a half inch of the sleeve showing and glue that on. So I'm just going to take some regular stuffing and I'm just going to go ahead and fill in that void. And you'll see what I'm talking about when you make yours. There's going to be an open right there. You want to make sure that you get it full so that it does go and complete his arm. Okay, next we're going to put some glue inside the hole that we made earlier, put a little bit around it, and just go ahead and glue that in. And then just hold that till it dries. And do exactly the same thing with the other arm. So I'm just going to take some needle and thread, and I'm going to stitch the top part of that arm all the way around to the body. And it doesn't have to be perfect, just get it tight enough to where the stuffing does not come out. And if you're selling these, this is probably a really good way to do this too because it really did finish the arm out nicely. And I use the cause clay because it gives you the bendability on the arm so you can bend his arm some if you want to shape it. to give him a little bit of bling I'm going to add a couple of little cuff links on this side I'm just taking two of the Savorsky crystals and I'm just attaching one and then one above it just kind of dressed it up a little bit Next for the beard I'm just going to cut some faux fur that measures two inches wide by one inch long and then I'm going to cut in a U-shape around there all the way down to the bottom and then back up the other side. Just make sure that you get it into a U-shape. And then clean all the excess fur off. To attach it, I'm just going to go just a little bit above that line that we drew when we first started, right where the hat is. Just go above it. And then we're going to pull the hat on down and put our, and put our nose on. Okay, next we're going to go ahead and put the hat on and then we're going to glue it into the back. And we're just going to spot the glue this. We're not going to add a lot of glue to his hat. Just put some in the back to hold it down. And then we're going to put the nose on and we're going to glue the top part of the hat to the nose. We're just kind of separating the hair right here just to get the nose on. So kind of split it down the center. And then we're just going to add a little bit of glue to the back of that nose and put it in. And that's a 15 millimeter half bead. And then we're going to glue the top part of the hat to the nose. Okay, next I'm just going to take a little flower that I have. It's a little bit large for him, so I am going to cut it. It's just a little rose petal or a rosebud that I have. I'm just going to kind of twist it together and put some glue in there to make it a little bit tighter together. And then I'm going to cut the bottom of it off and I'm going to attach it back. So I'm going to go ahead and cut it off a little bit shorter above where the greenery is. And then I'm going to save it and put the greenery back on. And then go ahead and glue that together and squeeze that tight too. Or you can just find a flower that will fit on his um, lapel. And then I'm just going to glue that green part right back onto it. I'm going to trim it out a little bit to make it a little bit smaller. And then I'm just going to wrap it around and glue it in.
And then I'm just going to glue it right to the front part of his jacket. Okay, I think he turned out super cute. Let me know what you think in the comments. I'll have the bride coming soon. If you like these kind of videos, be sure and give me a like, subscribe, and ring that bell to be notified when I have a new video upload. Thank y'all so much for being here. I really appreciate it.